there guys, gals, non-binary pals, GM Potter here, and today we are going over the top five graphic novels that I read in 2022. Now these are not necessarily books that came out in 2022, in fact I don't think any of them are, uh, but these are books that I read this past year and I decided to rank the five best ones I read, and so let's take it away. <laughs> Starting, coming in at number five, we have Mouse by Art Spiegelman. Now this book came out in uh, 1991, in this, in this form, it came out in 1991. I'll go ahead and link the review I did of it up in the cards. I read this one for Band Book Week. Um, I would describe this one as moving, as groundbreaking, as important. Please, please read Mouse. It's incredibly important. It's the story of the Holocaust, of one Holocaust survivor's story as told to his son, and it's incredibly moving. It's, it deals with not just the atrocities of World War II and the concentration camps, but it deals with survivor's guilt, and it deals with all of the things that you have to do to survive and how that changes you as a person. How the the horrible things that you've survived that you've endured change you and how that affects and impacts your loved ones generations on it's uh it did win the pulitzer prize which it deserves it it is absolutely amazing stunning artwork uh it's drawn in here I'll sh I can show you it's drawn in kind of a newspaper comic style so it's very graphic and I don't mean that just in the graphic art st sense I mean that it's also a little graphic in in what it depicts because it doesn't shy away from anything um, the mice are starving in in the concentration camp and it shows their ribs it shows them lined up for the showers that weren't showers it shows all of the horribleness it doesn't shy away from any of it and I think that's really important in a world where boy in the striped pajamas which is written almost as a way to empathize with the little Nazi children I, I have a lot of thoughts on boy in the striped pajamas and how it's replacing important works like mouse and night and it bothers me <laughs> so instead of reading that one read mouse it's incredibly important it's a graphic novel so it reads up pretty quick um you will probably have to take breaks though when you're reading it because just to shut the book and and contemplate on how a human being could do this to another human being so number five is mouse <laughs> Something a little lighter, we have Drama by Raina Telgemeier. Now this one is a middle grade book. Um, it's, she also wrote Smile, um, which was a uh, Will Eisner award winner, um, Boston Globe Horn Book Honor Book, uh, New York Times Choice. She's a New York Times bestselling author. This one is also a banned book which is more than a little silly because it's a book about the dynamics of boyfriends and girlfriends in middle school and how even the most serious of students can fall into that trap and the drama and it's set around a school play and I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll link uh, the the video up in the cards um, for this one because I also reviewed this one this year and it's really cute. It subverts your expectations in the most delightful ways. And it's just it's just a charming story. Like there's no reason for it to be banned. They they banned it. It was banned because of the gay agenda. And it's like some people are gay, okay? It's that's not a bad thing. Honestly, some diversity is a good thing, I think. So 
Should you read drama? Yes, please do. Um, it's a lot lighter than than Mouse. Uh, you should still read Mouse though. And the art style is just it's just cute. It's it's kind of a web comic y style um web comic y style art style. But it's really cute. It's super cute. It's a good book. It's light, but it still tells an important story. So coming in at number three, we have The Witch Boy by Molly Knox Ostertag. Now this one, again, I will link up in the cards because um, I did review this one as well. This one I would see as more of a it's it's the alphabet mafia agenda type book because this one honestly feels like a trans allegory uh in that it talks about gender roles and it talks about subverting the gender roles and breaking through the prescribed gender gender norms and doing what makes you happy which if you're not hurting anybody what's the problem with doing something that makes you happy there there, there is none honestly like do what makes you happy and forget the rest as long as you're not hurting anybody it shouldn't matter so this one is again a middle grade it's very well written it's beautifully drawn uh let's see if i can get some drawings without the spoilers so here's some of the illustrations it's a little bit more of a classic comic style which is really cute um it tells a compelling story and the criticism I've seen for this one is that it's it's telegraphed and it's e you, you you see it coming a mile away. Well, yeah, it's it's for eleven year olds. <laughs> like the first Harry Potter book, I saw the ending coming a mile away because I read it when I was thirteen instead of eleven, uh, because it took me a while to get my hands on a copy from the library, and yeah. Books for children are often at least a little predictable because, you know, they're for children. So, The Witch Boy coming in at number three. Then we have, uh, this one is a reread. Um, I've read it many, many times. This is actually my second copy of the book. And that is Ghost World by Daniel Klaus. I love this book. I absolutely adore this book. Um, I first it came out in 1998. Um, I watched the movie when it came out. Um, my brother rented it from Blockbuster and we watched it together and he was like, oh, this is dumb. And I watched it and I was like, this movie has changed my life um, because I guess I was the target audience for it. Um, yeah, it's... I read the book first when I was 19. I got it from my local library. Shout out to local libraries, especially those that carry graphic novels. You are the real MVP. Um, it's a coming of age story where nothing seemingly goes right and you have to deal with the consequences of your actions and of... It, it's, it's about dealing with consequences in a very real way. And I love the art style. The art style is very interesting. It's told in kind of this greenish way the whole way through. It's it's lovely. Um, a lot of people don't like Ghost World because they're like, oh, Enid, the main character, is just she 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 doesn't think about other people. I'm like, that's kind of the point is that she learns to empathize over the course of the book, and she learns that her actions have consequences. That's kind of the point of the whole book is that she she learns these things because she's used to having a carefree childhood and now all of a sudden she's trying to graduate high school and actions have consequences the things she does that she's like oh this will be funny has a consequence all of a sudden and it has repercussions and it's i enjoyed it i still enjoy it i reread it every couple years i go back and i reread it and i still love it so, Ghost World, Daniel Klaus, please check it out. And then coming in at number one, um, this one I read this year. It came out in 19, and sorry, no, it came out in 2019. Um, I'll link it in the cards, but that is Genderqueer. And this one is another book that I feel is very important. 
Um, it's by Maya Kobabe. Again, um, I felt like it was telling my story. This is the art style. So there's something very familiar in the art style, which I appreciate because it's telling what could be considered an unfamiliar story to a lot of people. I've lent this book out several times and everybody that I've made read this book is like, I feel like the author is telling my story, even if it isn't, even if they're not gender non-conforming, even if they're not asexual, they're like, I feel like the author is telling my story. And um, I'm going to keep lending it out, um, buying copies to give away. <laughs> Because basically, I want everyone to read this book because it's, to me, it's that important. It's a heart-rending story of self-discovery and the journey to self-love. Um, this book made me feel seen in places I felt like the author was telling my story. I felt such a kinship and a closeness to the author in so much of the work that I had to close it and shut my eyes and just sit in my feelings and it made me confront things that I hadn't confronted, that I hadn't thought about, that I hadn't reconciled, were not normal things to feel. And Gender Queer is absolutely amazing. This is also a banned book because of course it is. Because we can't have anyone who's non-conforming in any way get any semblance of the spotlight even for a moment because then then the the, the Alphabet Mafia has won. No, that's absolutely not true. Not even a little bit. <sighs> Genderqueer. Absolutely fantastic book. Um, this one doesn't exactly read up quick because there's so many striking points in the story that you have to close it and you have to think and you have to meditate on what you've just read. So, Genderqueer. Also amazing. Also fantastic. Please, please, please read Genderqueer. Um... And yeah, those are the top five graphic novels I read this year. Um, did you read any graphic novels? Do you read any graphic novels? Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!